it's it. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome to It's a Squirrel World. I'm Piper. I'm Dee. I'm Danny. And today we are going to be talking about what in the swirl. What in the swirl? <laughs> what swirl? Uh, but before we get into that, let me let everybody know that, as usual, this is a safe space where we discuss all things swirl. More importantly, we do a lot of discussions on BWWM. That's our primary focus. However, we do reserve the right to get rid of comments or get rid of people who are messing up the flow in here. Because this is a safe space, we don't want any negativity. We don't want anybody feeling like they can't be free to be themselves and all their BWWM glory. So just mm -hmm. know, while this is a safe space, we can block your crap. That's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so now that I've changed that and up. And we're allowed to. Also. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. And Nobody people, said we have to keep all your hate on our channel. Exactly. And I know everybody's probably wondering where this came from, but we've had some uh, some uh, some haterating and some hateration on some of our videos and in some of our comments and it was uh, misunderstood that you could just say whatever you wanted to here. And right. while we do support intellectual mature conversations, we do not support ignorance and stupidity mm -hmm. or threats. So that those things could get your stuff deleted. But we don't strive to block anyone, but we will. Because this is not a democracy. This so, is a dictatorship. Exactly. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, so, we run this. So we, we, we run this ish. So now we're going to get into what in the swirl? So, we're talking about all things movies and literature, and we're going to start with movies. Because movies so, are fun. Yeah, and there's a lot of movies that people don't know about that have some BWWM action in them. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to start it off with the Sally Hemings, An American Scandal uh, story of Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson, because Thomas Jeff Jefferson is a swirler from way back, like <laughs> <laughs> literally, <laughs> like, like, and this is a true story, like it's an actual true story. It's based on real stuff, and I think that's why I like it personally. But it has, um, and I'm horrible at the names of the people that are in this movie. But it's Sam Neill and Carmen something. <laughs> I'm not even going to butcher it. It's E-J-O-G-O. -O. So if you know how to say it, say it. Um, and Diane Carroll, who plays um, Sally Hemings' mother in it. She's amazing. Yeah, it's really good. It's a really good movie. I like the whole history behind the fact that swirling has been going on since way back when. And a lot of people don't know that Sally Hemings even lived with Thomas Jefferson until he died. Like, he had freed all his slaves. They were all gone. And she was free, but she stayed. So, um, it's an interesting, it's a true American love story. <laughs> and how old is this movie, Piper? Um, it's it's quite a bit old. It's probably early '90s, early to mid '90s is when it came out. So mm -hmm. it's not new. You will have to search for it if you want to find it. And it took me a while to find it, but I ordered it off of Amazon the moment I found it and had it shipped to me. Okay. So um, because we I am, need, we um, need to demand that, it, that Netflix puts it on on that channel on their right? on their page. It might be out there. Yeah, they should, but um, I had, um, which I guess Danny suggested I share, because I've heard a lot of things about people saying that, you know, because there's a lot of BWWM stuff out there on YouTube now. Um, I just watched, I think, like, four new couples on YouTube that are BWWM, and people are a lot of times get it twisted that women are just showing off their white boyfriends or whatever, but that's not what it is, and... It's basically because people, you know, it's different for black women especially to date outside of their race. They're like the last race of women to really take mm -hmm. that final step. So 
for black women, it's, it's uncomfortable sometimes, and not the relationship, but just feeling like they are shunned by other black people, black men especially. Um, they just get, you know, they get a raw end of the deal, and they want to feel like they can connect with people, and through YouTube, they put those videos up so that they can connect. They don't want to feel different. I know that's why I searched out every possible BWWM movie when I was younger, um, every book, because I felt like I was the outcast, and that, and I wanted to not feel so weird, and I wanted to connect with people that were, you know, like me, or had experiences similar to mine. So it had nothing to do with glorifying some white man or putting him on a pedestal. It was just finding people of like mind that helps you not feel so out of place. So this is why I know about a million things BWWM, and I'm leading this joint. Yep, so. you are our resident expert on BWWM and literature, <laughs> especially literature. Piper, I mean, half this, half this list I'd never even heard of. So you guys, you guys are like super in for a treat. Uh -oh, oh, then she's back. That's perfect. But she'll be back. <laughs> she will be back. She will be back. Danny, is there anything that you you off wanted the, to talk about off the cuff, like off, yeah, one of your movies? Cuff? Um, the, Since you're you know a what? resident African, semi African, no, there, you know it? what? There's no, there's no real African movies on here that I could see. Um, there is, there is a show on TV that I saw just the other day, and I think it's been on for a while, but um, called Neighbors. Have you seen that? Yes, that's the aliens or whatever, right? Yeah. 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 Um, I watched it's the first weird. episodes when they when it came on, um, and then I just kind of just forgot about it. But yeah. I know, I know she's African. It was she? Me. Yeah, yeah, she's Nigerian. Who's African? Sorry, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> no, we just, you know, since you're our, you know, resident BWWM expert, Danny's our, like, semi, you know, he's our semi-expert. Well, he's our resident <laughs> semi-expert. That's the most there anything.
Awesome. Oh, we're back on the air. What's up? Oh, my God. We're back. We are back on the air. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is just so not my night. Hey, I'm just happy it's not me, Dee. That's all I'm saying. This is horrible. I think you have, like... Anybody's night. We were off the air that entire time. Were we? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just until yeah. you came back on, we're now back on the air. Because when yeah, I dropped now off, we're back on the air suddenly. When I dropped off, we were talking about the neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, and that was just a filler until Piper got back. Because I know you have a, a certain <laughs> amount of, I know you have a certain amount of time until, you know, like where you can get back on and it'll just live unless we, you know, until we do a whole other hangout, which I was hoping that we would have to do. Sorry guys, we're thanks good. for hanging in there. We're good. We're good. We're good. Our channel's good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Sweet. Everybody should be hearing right. this again. Sweet. All right, so let's let's speed through this because we don't want any other stuff happening. <laughs> so I saw a show that's on our list just the other day for the first time. What? Lakeview Terrace. You haven't seen? You didn't, didn't see that before? No, you know what? I, all my friends went and watched that in the theater together, and I had to work that night, and I never had seen it since. And then I was flipping through the channels, and I saw Carrie Washington on TV, and I immediately stopped because I love her. Um, <laughs> and so then all of a sudden I was like, dude, I like this show. Yeah, no, I own that movie. I own all BWWF movies. Like, if I find one, I buy it. And guess what I discovered last night while watching The Lake House? The Lake there House. Is Yes, there is a BWWM relationship in that movie, and I was shocked. I was like, "The Lake I House? No clue. I don't know that yeah. movie." Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh! I told John you, you're the resident. The Lake yeah, with, House. Yeah, with Keanu. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, duh. That's right. Yes, his brother is with a black chick. His brother is like, "Oh, I'm taking Vanessa out for our, uh, for Valentine's Day." Vanessa's a black chick. Nessa Williams. I was like, oh, snaps. I didn't even realize it. Williams. <laughs> oh, but yes, um, yeah, so now I didn't add that to our list, but it's on there now because there is one in there, so it's on the list. And she's like a bona fide black chick, so I was like, yes. I didn't even realize that. I'm so concentrated on You know Sandra what's not Bullock. on our list either? You know what's not on our list either? What? Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, yeah. But see, it's, that's kind of a spoof, though, and she's like couldn't be any more stereotypical because she turns it but, into a G. But everybody, everybody, like, when <laughs> I don't know when I first when I first uh, brought a black woman home, that's what all my brothers said. They were like, "Is her name Lufanda?" <laughs> oh my god! Are wearing do rags now? Oh, lordy, lordy, oh, lordy. My god. <laughs> No. See, that's what I imagine happens at, like, the White House before I get there or, like, the when the guy is talking to his parents. I imagine that conversations like that happen before I'm introduced for the first time. Okay. Okay, you just thing. proved me right. He's no, no, no. I just got to just gotta make sure everybody knows that they're joking with me. They're not serious. It's not a serious <laughs> conversation we have. It's a joke. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Get a pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so back well, to, like, you Harris. So Steve, Steve hates Samuel L. Jackson in that movie. He absolutely loathes him. Yeah. And really? Mm-hmm. Because he's, yeah. he's a jerk. I, and that's how I feel about him in Django. But, um, yeah, like I hate his character in there. But I love the movie. I thought it was a really planes. good movie. I thought it was a really good movie. And it kind of left you... Um, there was innuendo at the end because you weren't really sure if his wife was with with the doctor when they, you know, got into that collision or just with yeah. him or with him with him. But there's, you know, you kind of, he kind of insinuates that they're together and that's why he's probably so bitter. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's never, but, it's never, but, but it could just be because he's crazy. Right. Yeah. But you, you never... But it leaves that question. Right. I so definitely cool. guarantee, I definitely guarantee if Samuel L. Jackson... His character was on YouTube. I know what channels he watches. <laughs> 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 oh, 
He'd watch ours just so he could. He'd know. watch ours ooh, and throw ooh, hate ooh, down. Ooh, 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 guys. Okay, I kind of want to just deviate a little bit. Um, so, okay. okay, well, for one, excuse my hat, y'all. I'm having like bad hair day. She's been working on the railroad all the live yeah, long day. Yeah, conducting my trains. <laughs> um, but. You know how we always get like the Black King six ninety nine nine ninety nine all those guys posting all over everything. Well, yeah. now we ha now we have white people doing it. We have a white guy. It's like Ooh. save the white race. Save oh from yeah, the oh, genocide. The white genocide. Yeah, I oh, blocked him. Yes. I was like, yay! <laughs> hey, he's co he's copying and pasting on everyone's channel though. Yeah, I saw him on Gabe and Babe the other day. Yeah, he's copying yeah. and pasting. He his name is like white guy. X Y Z something power, and he's not saying anything derogatory against other ethnicities. He's just saying preserve the white race because yeah, like preserve the white like, race, and it's well, not yeah. racist to be with your own people. Yeah, which is kind of true. True. It, well, nobody said it was racist to be with somebody who is the same ethnicity as you, but it's also not racist to be with someone of a different ethnicity either. Yeah, so That's I just thought I'd <laughs> throw that in, and I, I meant to throw it in, like, when you were saying that we have the right to reserve, whatever. We weren't really talking about him, per se. We don't mind those guys. Like, we know they're just copying and pasting on everyone's stuff, whatever. Yeah. But I thought it was funny, because we usually get the black ones, or the ones who yeah, pretend the that they're black men. Issues. Yeah. And now we've got the white man who's running around saying, save the white race. So, But he, so has, he, has, a, he has a co-pilot, too, I've seen. Oh. Is that something yes, with an E? I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it's a and it's a girl. Yes. He has a co-pilot following yes. him around. Yeah, I remember that. I saw yeah. that. Um, want to go to the comments? Crazy in Love says definitely some pathology going on in Samuel L. Jackson's character in Lakeview Terrace. I wish they explored it more. Right, and that's what we were saying. Like yeah. you were just kind of left to innuendo. You're not really sure what yeah. exactly was going on, but it was good. I, I enjoyed his character. Steve hated his character. In that movie. Yeah. <laughs> But I, yeah. I, and I wonder what happened to the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do too. Because they kind of Car they Carrie leave a Washington lot open. adopted them. Probably. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what happened. They leave a lot open as far as like his character is concerned, and just and just leave a lot to your speculation. Like, mm -hmm. okay, well, maybe his wife was cheating on him, and that's what kind of drove him Thank overboard. You. And, like, having them move in next to him just kind of brought it all back home. And right. so you have that thought, but you're not 100% sure if that's really what happened. Okay. But, yeah, it leaves a lot open to, you know, just your speculation. But, yes, that's a good one. I'm glad you watched it, Danny. Out of Welcome nowhere, it wasn't. Club. It wasn't even because it was on the list. It was on TV one day. Well, it, was on a sun, it was on a Sunday too. Those are the days I relax. It's probably on BET because it's been on BET a lot. But it was you probably gotta on watch, BET. Yeah, you got to watch the real deal, not hacked up version. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they leave a lot out on TV, so you got to watch. I think the I, I think I set it up to record too. <laughs> Good. Okay, where's our next one we have, and I'm going to explore this one just because I know Dee has some issues with it, Neo Ned. Mm. Anybody seen Neo Ned? I, Neo only, Ned I only watch it because I love Gabrielle Union. <laughs> you are crazy, yes. I, I really do, I really do, and I, I only watched that movie because she was in it, and I was like, not too cool with it, I was like, eh, eh. But I kept watching it because she was there. It's love in the in the you know psychiatric institution. You know? <laughs> she thought she was she thought she was Hitler reincarnated. And that wow. was funny. <laughs> yes, and that was hilarious. And she kept like speaking German, or at least she thought she was. And but then she had so many like deep issues behind that and. Jeremy uh, Rayner's character was just like wanted to belong so bad that he got in involved in white uh, the KKK for, or white power for no reason just because he wanted to be a part of something. <laughs> so now this, it. this came out circa what? Um. Oh God, I own this movie and I don't. This wasn't have was it. it wasn't that long ago, was it? Um. Yeah, it was. was it, it was because I've owned it for at least like over five years. So, so it's definitely 2002. Yeah, and it's more like an independent. It's shot kind of more independent, like. Yeah. But there's, but there are bigger names in it. Um, and it's just, but it's one of those movies where it's funny because he, 
there is a sort of crazy love aspect to it. Yeah. <laughs> and what he does for her, but you know, ultimately Jeremy Rayner just really wants to belong. So even if he has to kill someone, he'll he just wants to belong. <laughs> Though there was that hot scene with them in the rain after they first escaped the loony bin, that was a, that was a, a hotter scene than I expected. Crazy in Love said, "I've seen you, and that it's border okay, good in my opinion." Yeah, I mean it's not it's not winning any awards or anything. It's not like when I'm sitting at home and like what to do. I don't just like pull out Neo <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't like watch that or anything, but. It's a it's a BWWM with people that you might not have ever known were in a movie like that together. Okay, okay. So. Cool, cool, cool. Well, you know, no one's gonna um, just let something new go by. Everyone knows that movie yeah. in this community. Yeah. Everyone knows the stars and Al Ethan and and what's his name? Simon Baker. Simon Baker. He's a hottie. That's the guy. Who, what, what TV show is he just on? The Mentalist. The Mentalist. That's right, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole time I was watching that movie, because that's another movie I just recently watched. Dude! What? Like, what probably a year ago. <laughs> like, probably a year ago. Because I discovered this one particular Walmart has BWWM movies. <laughs> wow. Dude, where that's have you been? And it's like. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, uh, it's like, like they're all on the like discount, like four for five dollar rack. Ah, uh, they get no love, no love, no, no love. There's great movies no. on that rack. So. Yeah, so, I've got some good stuff too on that rack too. I <laughs> love something new. I never will forget. Uh, whenever some more, because I like some more as a comedian. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was funny when she's like, "Oh, it looks like you brought your nightlight with you." Yeah. I, I laugh those, so hard. <laughs> those those kind of jokes get on my nerves. Um, yes, they do. But they yeah. like an ex they were an extreme idea of you know the dating outside of your race. Obviously, they put right. extreme version of that right. with it. You know, like they kept calling him Iron Giant or Iron Johnny or whatever. And you know, her parents were all bougie and like, oh, he's the he's the gardener. And you know, there was a lot of stuff they played with in that. But her mom yeah, was her bougie. Dad was kind of cool. Yes. Yeah, the dad was it, cool. Mom was bougie. Because it was also a huge difference. In, it was. It wasn't just race. It was also class. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And for once, it was not the black woman who was lower class. It was right. actually the white man mm -hmm. who was, and that was a definite plus in their favor because you don't get to see the educated black woman a lot of times in movies like that. And this one had, you know, her. Um, what one of her friends was a doctor, the yep. or a pediatrician. One was a judge. You know, See, like they were I real. Feel, I feel like that movie has like set up like new movies. Like I feel like there's a lot more movies like that now. But we just haven't discovered them all. Well, no, I mean, and and it's probably it's not just it's not just um, B W W M. But there's a lot more movies showing strong black women, like. Um, Deborah Union's in one. What's it called? Um, oh, it's a Tyler Perry movie too. Well, you know think? Oh my God! I don't really want to talk about Tyler Perry. Oh my God! What is it? Daddy's Girls. Daddy's Girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, but I'm saying like there's a lot more movies where they're showing the strong, the strong black woman, which I yeah, like the, because that's what I'm attracted to. I, I don't know. I think that we've always had movies that that depict us as a strong black woman. We're just always the strong one and that's all we are. We're not educated, exactly. we're not smart, exactly. we're just, you know, the friend, the the the, the buffoon, the the, the maid, yeah. the whatever, you know, the the underdeveloped character, the sidekick. Yeah. So now we are in roles that, you know, are we're leading and we're intelligent and we're beautiful and men, you know, desire us and we're just um, we're, you know, we're not in this, I don't know, what's her name the other night? She won the Emmy when it clearly should have been Carrie Washington. But there's Anna still... Gunn? No. No, because Anna Gunn shouldn't have won either. No, not well, she was, a, she, was against, <laughs> she was up against Carrie and um, whatever her show was. 
I know you guys watching know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, I'm like drawing a blank right now. But like whatever it was, like she won, and I was like, oh, this show is still on. I thought it was canceled, but the point is, you know, it was up against Carrie, and we're still as in Hollywood. We are definitely still. Mm-hmm. It's not liberal Hollywood. It's really underappreciated. Not. Very uh, much underappreciated. We're getting there. We've got a long way to go. A long yeah. Way well, yeah. Go. I mean, honestly, like we were talking about this the other day. There's still there's still people. There's still um, like ethnicities of people that are still just props in the background. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like like the show Newsroom. I love the show Newsroom, but there's two characters that are black. That they have had zero character development at all. What there's zero for them. Everyone else, like they have the dumb blonde that has a little bit of character development, but they, these two, the black woman, the black man, have no character development. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's just sad good. to see that. Well, it's even uh, oh, let's go to the comments. Crazy and Love says strong black women archetype can be detrimental though right and that's yeah. what I mean like we've always yeah. been the strong one but we are also vulnerable we're also you know yeah. want to be loved or need to be loved and yeah. we want to yeah so we want to show that side and I think that's where our characters are, are going or headed well, towards. Well I think that they don't I mean that's exactly why there's so much uh, you know issues with Scandal because people right. don't like because Carrie Washington's character for one is very strong but she is vulnerable she has a mm-hmm. lot of vulnerability and people immediately attack that oh you're just depicting the black woman as this that but really there have been white women mistresses all across TV and everywhere and unfortunately that is another facet of life and it's true for black women just like it would be for white women and people are having a hard time seeing the vulnerable side of her and, and, it's, uh, it's, and, the, and Hollywood doesn't portray the sh- a strength and vulnerability well you know like in right. black women for whatever reason like in white women they seem to be able to do it just fine but when it comes to a black character either she's so strong she doesn't need a man that they don't even include her in a relationship because she's right. so strong which is detrimental and they don't know how to make her vulnerable. You know, they either go that very stereotypical strong black woman, or they don't, or they go totally vulnerable where she's, you know, knocking her head in a corner. She's a maid somewhere. You know, like she's not, you know, like right. she's not the strength. Do you think that's because Shonda wrote that, and not some white guy? Well, uh, you, could you <laughs> say who is it that wrote the very? Um, I guess too soon. It was very premature on cancellation, but Deception. Who wrote that? Oh, I don't know who wrote Deception. Okay, and if we want to go back to just where they're intelligent, they're beautiful, they're vulnerable, they're strong, all in one as well. Um, I know it's Ma- with Tamara Brock a kill with girlfriends, and then she also is um, on the game. But who produces it? Kelsey Grammer. It's a white male. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a. Yeah. I think it's definitely a, a mix. And actually, we're going to talk about that later um, in, in when we move over to literature and the different authors writing from other characters' perspectives and how yeah. we as the audience read into that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. Our next movie I want to mention, and I'm just going to throw it out there because I have to, is Restaurant because I love that movie. And as everybody knows, I have a big old crush on Adrian Brody. And... As everyone else. Big old nose. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I love his nose. It's just like a Roman nose, Piper. Looks like yes. a beak sitting on his face. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, it's a Roman nose and it's beautiful. And <laughs> if he was an animal, he would be Toucan Sam. <laughs> no! Adrian Brody, in that movie, he is first with Lauren Hill. That's his first girlfriend, and it's like his ex girlfriend, and he's having a hard time getting over her. And then he hooks up with um, Elise Neal. Mm -hmm. And so it's awesome because it's not like, oh, he was with a white woman. Because that's usually the MO. It's like they're trying something new when they branch out over to a black woman. But it turns out his character had already been with a black woman. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. His heart was broken over it. And he's just like trying to come out from under it when he meets this new chick who comes in on the scene. And she's also black. So it was clearly not a fetish for him. It was reality. And as most, as a lot of people don't know, Adrian Brody is a swirler in real life. He likes a sister. Seriously? <laughs> so, nice. Yeah. He's all about it. Oh, goodness. 
I'm, I'm trying to, to uh, recruit him as one of my starting lineup. He's awesome. <laughs> I, I need him on the team. <laughs> He's amazing. But, yes, that's a good movie. And that movie um, is really old. It's from maybe, like, 1995, 94. Okay. Um, it's really, really old because this is way back, probably right after Lauren Hill did um, Sister Act. Like, okay. in that same era of Sister Act, which a lot of, I don't know if anybody knows, but yeah, she was in Sister Act 2, and yeah, she's in that, and it's so crazy. It's such a good movie. If you have a chance to see Restaurant, see it, but it is one of the hardest movies to find. It really is. I looked for two years for this movie until I found it, so it is a really hard movie to find, but Adrian Brody's in it, and he's like, so down. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. Oh Can we go over to the comments really quick? So, yes. Sci Fi Cutie, I don't know if she's been on a live show, but if not, welcome. She says that her favorite BWWM movie is something new. And then she asks, Did you just say that Deception got canceled? Yes, boo. Yes. It was canceled. We knew in May. I was very, very sad yeah. that it was canceled. I was canceled. devastated. I mean, it was very premature. NBC was very yeah. premature with this. And it's like. Yeah. What you can't have two strong black women on network right. TV at the same time. Well, they put them right. in competition with each other too. They were trying to get the scandal audience. Well, they moved which, the show to to try to get the scandal audience. Which which is smart. It's a smart marketing move. You're trying to yeah. get you know. Oh, here's another one. Well, I can't watch it, but let me DVR it, kind of deal. Yeah, um, exactly. Right. So that was smart, but you know, they still didn't give us a I guess a concrete answer to why because the ratings were kind of they were kind of level. Good. Yeah. 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 They were good I mean, enough to keep the show on. So it was really weird that they took it off the air. Right. And I actually liked Megan Good in it, which yes. was shocking because I did not think I would like her because she's always in those teeny bopper movies of, you know, you all those, you know, you got served or whatever the heck she's in, you know, like she's always that kind of character, but she was good in it. Yeah, she and was. And I actually didn't mind her and really was annoyed that they canceled it because I think they could have gotten at least another season. Just Absolutely. try it out. Absolutely. So they, they did a bad the movie. Dude, the dude that she was in love with in that movie, that was the same guy that was in Damages, right? Yeah. Wesley Brown, I think is his name. Yes. I don't know. Wesley he Brown. was my he was he was Dawson in Damages. And he just didn't even get to see their 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 chemistry and their relationship yeah. and because they just they had gotten oh. they they had just gotten together and I'm like no why did it was do so this to me? slow in the beginning and then it picked up yeah. and it was really really good and just the supporting the cast across the board was great. Right. Like, I wish like. You know, Netflix or something would pick it up because it was really a really good show. Right? Yeah, I Victor like Grable it. and I mean, just what's Tate the, Donovan. Mm hmm. It just yeah. it was really good, and it literally was like at the I know for me at the end of every week I was like, well, who done it? Yeah, like it exactly. left you just like that. That was really good writing. Mm hmm. Really good writing. So. I enjoyed it. I was I was I was pissed off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was I was too. I was so sorry, Sci-Fi Cutie. It was canceled. Yeah. Oh, I know. Um, so, do we have any more comments? Um, just I guess kind of backtracking. Um, Sci-Fi Cutie said she'd never heard of Neil and Ned. Well, now you do, so check it out. And if you watch it, come back and let us know how you liked yeah. it. Um, exactly. Crazy in Love is saying I enjoy how in something new infused SES into the mix too. What's SES? What I miss? Am I having a slow moment? Yeah, I've been trying to figure that out too. Wait, S S E S or S E X? Because S E X is sex. Do you need me to explain what it is? <laughs> How that works? Please explain. <laughs> Infused S E S into the mix. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Crazy. We are all over thirty, so you gotta type some things out for us. I, I don't. We don't need an acronym. We need the yeah. Real we need word. a word. We're not the acronym people. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Oh, Crazy in Love rolls her eyes at Danny's brothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now she said that before I said that they were just joking. Yeah, <laughs> but she still rolled her eyes at you, so at their at your brothers. So yeah, that's it for the comments, guys. Okay, now I'm gonna rattle off a couple really quick because we're going through. We had some technical difficulties. I'm gonna try to catch us up so we can get into literature. So I'm going to roll some off. You guys jump in if you've heard of them. Okay? 
So there's Boiler Room with Giovanni, Giovanni Ribisi and Nia Long. Who's awesome. Uh, yes. Yes, Neil Long and, and Giovanni Ruby. Yes, Ruby. I love him. I love Giovanni Ruby. But he should not I, be in the TV show he's in right now. That is a right? stupid Right? What movie. is it? Dads or whatever? That I'm is like, a stupid... stupid. And, that's, and it's Seth MacFarlane, and it's totally racist, and it's awful. It's a horrible yeah. show. That's it looks now. like it's going to get canceled. Yeah, it looks it so bad. Be. It's so bad. But yes, I like anybody whose name is Giovanni. I don't know what it is. I like that. <laughs> I like that name. Any guy, because there's some girls, but any guy who's Giovanni and Italian or close to it or uh, maybe Italian, I'm on board. Okay, Boiler Room so, is really good, though. Um, yes, it is. Uh, we have My Last Day Without You, which is starring Nicole, I don't know how to say her name. It's B. Bihari? 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 Yeah, and Ken Duncan. And. The Nicole Bahari, she is the lead in Sleepy Hollow right now. Oh, okay. Which is, okay. Yeah, which is also a squirrel relationship. Well, sort of. You know it's going to go that way. I hope it does. I'll be pissed if it doesn't. So, yeah. I'm excited to watch it. I recorded yeah. it, but I haven't watched it yet, so I'm excited. Oh, it's so good. you got to watch it. I've already seen the first two episodes. I'm hooked. I'll be very upset if it goes off the air. Um, then there's The Bodyguard, Kevin Costner, Whitney Houston. Classic. Yes, which is a classic. It is very classic. And then we have the Whoopi Goldberg era. So we have Karina Karina, Made in America. Um, in Made in America, she's with Ted Danson, who was also her boo thing in real life. At the time? And, um, yeah. yeah, at the time. It was then her he, boyfriend. Then he, then he left her for uh, Mary Steenberger or whatever yeah. it is. And then we have Whoopi Goldberg and Ray Liotta and Karina Karina. And I... Love that movie. I mean, what's, what's Karina Karina about? I forget. Serious? A okay, widow, it's about a widower. A widower and and his he, daughter. Um, yeah, his daughter like stops talking or whatever after the death of her mother, and he's atheist, so he just like doesn't even talk to his daughter about it. She just stops talking, and then he goes through like a couple of maids trying to find somebody to watch his kid so he can go back to work. Karina ends up working for him. Sorry. And, and is, isn't they, his daughter named Karina too? No. Um, okay. Molly is his daughter's name. That's right. So, but Karina's the only one that gets, you know, through to Molly, and they start having, like, these, you know, interactions, and they start acting like a married couple, and it's so romantic and sweet. And it's, like, and, 1950s. Right. Yes. I remember that now. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, like, she and so had everybody the, kind of looks at them side-eyed the whole time. But. Yeah, oh, exactly. But it's so good. I like that movie. I remember when it first came out, I was like, yes, score! Because uh, I like Ray Liotta. I have a little crush on him. I don't know. I, what still do the little, I still do the little thing sometimes when I'm driving and uh, I see the light. It's do red you blow and, it? and I blow, <laughs> trying to get it to change. <laughs> I do that, too. I'm like, oh, I remember <laughs> And then I look stupid because it doesn't change, and I'm like, dang it, I was too fast. Too Every slow. time I do that, I think, man, I should watch that movie again. <laughs> yeah, I love that movie. Or, like, I love it. My favorite part in that movie is when the vase breaks, and she's like, do you have any glue? I'm a really good gluer. And she glues it back together, and then the white woman that they try to fix him up with breaks it, or, like, she takes it from his house, and he's, like, missing Karina. And he's like, what do you have? And she's like, oh, it's this old base. I was going to throw it out. And he's like, no. And she's like, yes. And there's like a tug of war. And then he rips it out of her hand and just smashes it into like a million pieces on the ground. <laughs> and she's just like, and she is floored. And it's because he loves Karina so much. And I just really like that movie. That oh, movie speaks to Yeah. It's been yeah. a really long time since I've seen that movie. A really long I think, time. I think, it, I think I, the last time I saw it was when it first came out. Really? Oh, my god! Yeah, when I was a kid. I remember watching it when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, no. And then we have everybody's favorite, or at least it should be everybody's favorite, A Bronx Tale. Absolutely. Yes. With Keisha. We have, <laughs> yes. Keisha. We have Colosio and Jane. A.K.A. Keisha from Valley Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, ooh, here's a fun fact. Colosio, the guy who plays him, he is in prison for 10 years. Yeah. For a burglary yep. that led to murder. Yep. <laughs> so there's yep. a little knowledge for yeah, he everyone. Was, he was in a lot of trouble. But we cannot forget 
those who paved the way. But before we get there, can we go to the comments, guys? Yeah. Crazy in Love defines SES, socioeconomic <laughs> status. Girl, that was that something in your PhD class? <laughs> we would have <laughs> never, ever, ever guessed that. I, I and, we already, and we already covered it, kind of. Yeah, we did, with the whole, you know, the fact that there was different classes. We, we definitely did touch on it. Oh, no, no, she was saying, remember, she liked how the movie infused that. But, oh, yeah. yeah. We would oh, never yeah. know what no SES was. <laughs> she yeah. also says that I love My Last Day Without You. It's such a good film. Yeah, I, it's kind of, I, I thought it was interesting, because when I first heard about it, I, of course, watched it immediately. I, I immediately watched it. I stopped everything to watch it, <laughs> and I got on board, and I liked it. I mean, it was a little bit more kind of indie to me, which I hate that so many of, like, the BWWA movies are more indie than they are mainstream, right. Right. and and that says a lot for, you know, Hollywood. They're, like, trying to dip their toe into it, but at the same time, not put it out there too heavily. So I think had it been, like, not so indie, I would I probably liked it a little bit more. Okay. So, um, Sci-Fi Cutie says, yeah, I really enjoyed the show, but it wasn't as good as Skin. Just piggybacking. Um, it wasn't trying to be like Scandal. Like, it wasn't, yeah. it was very different. It was still another strong lead character. And yeah. this time she was just on the other side of the law. And, you know, caught up in a love triangle, so to speak. But nobody's married. Nobody is, you know, yeah. the leader of the free world. It just well, and she was on. more flawed. She was a little bit more flawed, though, than Carrie Washington's character in Scandal. She had some very obvious flaws. You know, it starts out with the death of her best friend, who she mm -hmm. hasn't seen. And that, I mean, and there's a lot of issues, you know, as they glance back in her childhood and, like, stuff, you really see, like, that she's, you know, she's definitely flawed, and we learn a lot about her versus yes. in Scandal, not really right. knowing anything about Carrie Washington. Agreed. But we're going to find out this season. Agreed. Yeah. So I like yeah. that. I do, I really appreciate it, Deception, and the character um, just delving into the background and, and yeah. seeing what it was. And even Mom, it was like, everybody had a secret. Everybody. Yes, everybody. When mom had a secret, I was like, what? Dang it. Yes. Like, like who done it? Yeah. It was great. It was great. Yeah. So. I totally think so, too. Any more comments? Steve's in the background playing Whitney Houston, <laughs> I Will Always Love You. <laughs> it just got, like, really loud. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's paying homage <laughs> to our BWWM over here. So. There he is. <laughs> no. What's up, Swirl World? They miss you, babe. They miss you. Swirl World misses you. I'll be back. Not crazy and love is on there. Say hey to crazy. Hey, crazy. <laughs> and we got a newbie, Sci-Fi Cutie. Let me get my man Tony. We're going to do a show by ourselves. Yeah, you, you and Danny. <laughs> Gosh, all right. Okay. So we cannot talk about the new without talking about the old. And Correct. the old would be Ms. Dorothy Dandridge in yeah. Tamango. Tamango? Yes. Tamango. I like to say Tamango. I thought it was Tamango. Or <laughs> I like Tamango. I think Tamango, it just sounds Tamango. sexier. I know, Tamango, I, Tamango. I think it sounds sexier. Yes, it does. But it was uh, 1958, and did you guys know that it was banned in the U.S. and in France? Yes, because I watched the Dorothy Dandridge story, mm -hmm. and I heard with Miss Halle Berry. She did a really good yes, job. yes. She did a really really great job in that movie. Yes, she did. Um, she had so many other films, Dex on the Red, and she was fabulous, guys. Miss Dorothy Dandridge, and she was just, it's always the most fabulous who are the most flawed and most just, I don't know, just so, it, I guess, tumultuous inside. Yeah. It's and they real. end up with these tragic, yeah, these tragic endings, because they're just so brilliant. Yeah. Yes, it's just too much to contain. It, they explode. Okay, what other, do you have any other? Um, what about, oh, 
crazy in love. I'm surprised because like she was all like, you know, Sally Hemmings, you guys didn't talk about it, but she didn't talk about it in, well, when we didn't discuss it in episode nine on our loving day. She oh, okay. she yelled at us for not bringing it up, <laughs> but she yes. didn't comment on it this time, which is is different. It's odd. Yes. Let's see. We're waiting. We're waiting. We um, did bring it up this time. Fantastic uh, Four, since we're talking about Kerry Washington. Yes, yes, with her with Michael Chiklis. Steve is uh, he <laughs> is uh, vlog bombing or show bombing. <laughs> He's show doing. bombing. Show bombing. That's what he's doing. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the Fantastic Four. We have um, for one night, which is a TV movie. It's not really. Um, it's not really a movie, movie, but mm -hmm. it's still a movie, and it's inspired by the true story of a black teenager who shook up a small town where high school proms were racially segregated for decades. Mm -hmm. And Aisha Tyler is in it, and Jason Lewis, and apparently they have a little love bang in that movie. And Aisha Tyler is married to a white man. Yes. She's been married since like '92, guys. Yes, mm -hmm. and she struggles with infertility. Does she? I didn't know yes. that. Yep, yes, she, she has a big her. struggle with it. When she was at, she came to visit her grandmother at the hospital. Steve met her. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. I didn't know that. I wonder why she didn't just like adopt or something. Poor thing. Yeah, oh. her and her husband, they've struggled for a long time. She just opened up about it recently. Okay. Um, and just was like, Dev, you know, she's kind of sad. She wants to be able to give her husband a, a child. And she says she's okay with it now and that they're just never going to have any kids or whatever. But it's sad. I'm like, oh. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Um, Crazy in Love says, what did you guys think of the Josephine Baker story? Okay, so I feel like we may have talked about that before on the 11-day episode. I but if so. we did it, I thought it was amazing. You know, we did talk about Josephine Baker. I do remember that specifically. Yeah. We, I don't think we talked so much about the movie, but we did talk about her um, life and, you know, um, as a whole. But as far as the movie, I thought it was amazing. I loved the movie. I remember seeing it as a kid. And just, wow. yeah, um, you guys have to remember, I grew up with my grand, my grandmother raised me, so I got to see a lot of movies as a kid that, you know, you probably wouldn't see until now. And so, yeah, yeah I was, I got a lot of exposure to old school type stuff. I thought it was amazing then. And how she had a rainbow tribe of kids and yeah, she left America to move to Europe and um, during, what's this, maybe World War One. Yep. Yeah. yeah, World War One. Just, I loved it, crazy. Like I, I think it's an amazing story. I think Lynn Whitfield did an amazing job. She did, she did her character justice, just like uh, Hallie did Dorothy Dandridge's justice, just like Angela Bassett did Tina Turner's justice. Like just, yeah, they embodied these women. Their character, yeah, they definitely did their research so that they got it right. I mean, amazing. Yeah. So I definitely enjoyed that movie. If you guys have not seen Josephine Baker's story. Dorothy Dandridge story. What's love got to do with it? You really should see. Should yeah, watch well, that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have Love Song, which is starring Monica and uh, Christian Kane. Now, Monica is the Monica from, you know, uh, the singer, you know, Don't Take It Personal, um, <laughs> Before You Walk Out My Life, um, all the other songs, Monica, or Monica and Brandy, The Boy Is Mine. That Monica, she did a movie, and it was a TV movie, um, but she did a movie with Christian Kane, who's from Leverage. I don't know if anybody watches the show Leverage. He's on that show. He plays, like, the muscle on that show, and he was on the show Angel, and um, I think his name was Lindsay or something on the show Angel. But uh, he is hot on that, and there's, like, a little bit of racial tension on that movie, but... They actually don't really focus on it too much. They do focus a lot on them getting together. And, again, that's another movie where um, the socioeconomic issues come to play because Monica's from a little bit wealthier of a family, and he's like this hick from the sticks. So, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Come on, we got to be down with it now that we know. It's yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know what, Crazy? That's right. You didn't tell us something. Yes, we're down with <laughs> SEX. No. <laughs> 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 and 
Yes. Um, okay, so we have uh, The Last Place on Earth. Now, I'm going to be honest. The Last Place on Earth is with Tisha Campbell yeah, Martin sure <laughs> and Dana... <laughs> And Dana Ashbrook. I didn't like that movie that much because Tisha Campbell's, Campbell's like dying in it, and um, her this guy like she just met basically. It's weird. I don't really like her, so you can watch it if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now you're. <laughs> Why don't you like Tisha Tisha Campbell? Because she went hard to the paint with Martin. And I like Martin. <laughs> I say you don't like Tisha Campbell because she light skin. <laughs> no, I don't care about that. Her, she's got a big old head. That's what I don't <laughs> like. <laughs> she has a big old dome. It's huge. That's what I don't like. She light skin to be with a big head. <laughs> no. I don't. I care about the fact that she went all hard to the paint with Martin after so many years of being on that stupid show, and I liked her on that show. And then out of nowhere, she's just going to be like, "Oh, he's all sexually harassing me. He's touching me." Like, "Oh, get he off was, it." He was touching her head. He was touching her head. <laughs> he's he's like, like I've never seen a head this big. Like, yeah, <laughs> help it. It's like got its own orbit. It just kind of. Yeah, like in there. Ray Tyler, he was ahead of the cl- he was ahead of the class. Yeah, it's like this huge watermelon on top of this little body. It's like this huge. It's so big. No, I did not. I don't like her that much. But the movie is kind of sad and sweet. She's dying. She gets married to this guy. They don't really know each other all that well. She dies. He's devastated. Watch the movie if you want to know everything. <laughs> he dies. Everybody dies in the movie. Spoiler alert. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. The world ends. Everybody dies. Um, of course, we have the Mr. and Mrs. Loving story, the movie, uh, with Timothy Hutton and Layla Rashawn. Uh, it's a good movie. It's basically the same exact story of, you know, the Lovings, but it's just, you know, their life story played out in film. Um, then we have Malibu's Most Wanted, Jamie Kennedy and Regina Hall. Be red. Yeah, be red. Because he's, uh, wait, what is he, from the boo? Malibu? He's like, he's, he's like, I'm too. I love that movie. That's my favorite movie. He's like, I thought the kitchen was open. Awesome. Go see that movie. If you haven't seen Malibu's Most Wanted, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> it's a good movie. There's another made-for-TV uh, movie. Oh gosh, you guys! And it's recent. It's Tony Braxton. Oh yes, it's uh, the Holiday Story one. Yeah, um, that I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> Do you, okay, is it her? Because I don't. Her yes, ex. it's her. It's, okay. It's her and um, I don't remember the name of her leading male, but yeah, he's white, and she was like. It was so, I was scared to kiss him. I was like, why? Did he have an extra set of lips somewhere that you didn't expect? <laughs> what is going on? I never understand that one. I mean, I guess I can see where, like, people are coming from if there's a huge cultural difference. But Tony Braxton is not, like, the most hood chick you could ever meet. So right. I don't know why she'd be so weirded out by, you know, kissing him. But she said that there was something weird about it. And, and then, she was so nervous. Then there was the movie with, um... Why do I want to call her Kiki Kiki Palmer? Is that it? Oh yeah, Joyful Noise. Yes. Yes. It's also that. I thought it was cute. I didn't see all of it, but I did think it was cute. This is a lot like Queen Latifah. I have such a list of movies I have to watch now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's the point of this show. Yes, and and Joyful Noise was very very cute. I liked it. Um, I love uh, Queen Latifah and Dolly Parton's uh, their their rapport with each other. They played off each other really well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it's if you're looking for a movie that's very wholesome, very um, spiritually grounded, then Joyful Noise is definitely a movie for you. If you don't like <laughs> sex, if you don't like sex, you don't like kissing, you don't like holding hands, you don't you like your romance implied and not actually experienced. You're gonna like <laughs> Joyful Noise. <laughs> um, I know this isn't lead character, but it's still I love the movie. And if you haven't seen that, what are you doing with your life? Bring it down the house. 
Um, I was just going to say that. Seriously, it's like, seriously, it's one of my favorites. Seriously. I was just going to say that. Like, just well, what did he say? Yeah, he's like, you got me straight tripping, boo. I'm all it's caught up in the game. <laughs> mindless funny. I think that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard. Yes. Seriously. That was a good one. And then we have um, Road Trip, DJ Qualls, and Mia Amber Davis. Because in Road Trip, remember, he holds up those big leopard panties or whatever. And they're like, what'd you do, skin a cheetah? Because <laughs> they go to that fraternity, that black fraternity, and they're all worried because, like, the guy's like, I can get us in here. I know the handshake. And they're like, he's like, I can pretend to be a brother. But then they get there, and it's like, brothers. <laughs> it's not. Like, and they let him in, though. And so, yeah, he gets together with that chick, and she turns him out. And they end up together at the end of that movie, and he holds up those big underwear like he got some, and he's all excited. And I don't know if you know DJ Pauls. Like, he is, like, no bigger than a minute. So yeah. these underwear are like a, like a parasailing <laughs> type. <laughs> he's, just, he's so big. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got some. And he's just, like, holding these gigantic underwear up. <laughs> so good movie. Uh, definitely some uh, BWWM in that. And then we have Think Like a Man, which we did our show. You know, we did our little play on words with our show, which was Gabrielle Union and Jerry Ferreira. And they were in a relationship in that. It's the one he didn't want to ever grow up. And, and, they'll, be in, and they'll be in Think Like a Man too. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and Ron Burgundy is dating Megan Good in the next Anchorman. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gotta see that. <laughs> oh my god. And there's a ton of uh, movies. What? Uh, oh, rest in peace, Maya. She was so beautiful. Maya Campbell, she died? What? What? Rest in peace, Maya. She was so beautiful. Maya Campbell, like from Philly, the one that was on the L the show with L. When did she die? She didn't die. Okay, we're gonna, gonna we're gonna wait for Crazy in Love to clarify. She don't be I killing know. off folks that ain't dead. She said. <laughs> um, Sci-Fi Cutie says I didn't like that movie in reference to the Tony Braxton made for TV movie. She oh, says really? I thought I thought Tony's. Act, um, yeah, that's why I asked you, Piper. Why weren't you? Because was it because of her or you just didn't like the overall? Um, I guess um, the plot of the story of the movie. I don't. I didn't like. I, I kind of thought I could get into it, but then I heard Tony Braxton's take on the whole just idea of like the white man, and I like I said, I you know a lot of people don't realize that I don't glorify white people, and I don't I don't put white people on a pedestal. I don't put black people on a pedestal. But I think it's weird when people make a big, big, huge Blank deal statement. like. And yeah, and she kind of made this huge deal out of something where she was acting like she's the most hood woman or something. Like she was like misrepresenting herself almost, you know. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really like that, and I didn't like her take on it. And the movie is a little bit bland, <laughs> a little dry. So, but it's Tony Braxton. So, how good could she be? I mean, she was in that movie Kingdom Come, and see where that went. Oh yeah, so, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So. I forgot about that. Um. <laughs> Uh, Crazy in Love says Twist of Faith. So that's a that's one that we have to look up. Twist of Faith. We're gonna have to look that up. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of them. There is a ton of movies that we're missing. Oh, and right. I miss and I'm missing them on purpose because this would be the longest show ever if I listed off all of the movies that have BWW because there are actually quite a few. And we um, skipped certain ones. We we had a criteria too. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't bring up monster. We didn't bring up monster ball because that's a h horrible example of BWW. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's not really what we're going for there. <laughs> True, and it's also and we tried to and I know that a lot of people are going to take offense to this and I'm just going to own it. I'm going to own it and say that it was my decision. But I tried to stay away from people that were maybe a little more mixed or not black at all, like Zoe Zeldana, who a lot of people like to just throw in the black 
cool, just but she's, she's not. Dark skin. Right. She's, she's dark skin. Because she's dark skin and she's Bernie Mac's child. Yeah. Don't you see yeah. the family resemblance? Yeah. yeah. But she's not black. So I, I did not include her because there's it, the words. Yeah, there's I don't feel like two. hearing all that. Isn't no, that kind of like a slap that in the face? She's Afro Latina, this and that. No, she's Puerto isn't, Rican and she's Dominican in kinda, America. We're just talking about right now in 2013 in America. Yeah. She is listed on that little check mark or that little circle as what Hispanic. Yeah. So we just yeah. we stuck to <laughs> authentically black chicks. Just regular like, old black. <laughs> regular old regular black. black chicks. That's regular black chicks. And we have nothing against irregular black chicks. I'm an irregular black chick. There are a ton of irregular black chicks. There's nothing nothing against them. Okay. Maybe we'll do an irregular black show one time. <laughs> I don't know. But, irregular black chicks. Irregular. But we stuck to just regular old black chicks. So that's why yeah. a, some of them are not included and maybe people think they should be. Um but we're going to move over to literature because we're trying to, you know, speed through. And there is a ton of literature with VWWM. So anybody want to – I think Dee should take it away because she has one that she really likes. So, Dee, what's the author you like? Um, her name is um, Mallory Monroe. And she has a couple series. Um, but the one series that I read, which was seven books, is called the, it's the President's Girlfriend series. And it's kind of like scandal in literature, maybe. But uh -huh. you're in it from the Melly perspective. So this woman, Gina, is, um, a, a, of course, obviously, she starts off as the girlfriend. And then she ends up being the wife of the, the leader of the free world for mm -hmm. his first and second term. And at the end, I don't want to give it away, but... Um, <laughs> Hmm. There, I have them on Kindle, but they are available in hard copy. I think they're overpriced for hard copy myself. Yeah. Um. Then she has another series. Her name is Mallory Monroe. She has another series, um, where there's this big powerful mob boss and his black woman, and you know they get married and have kids and all that stuff. But um, I'm looking forward to reading that series after I finish Piper's book. It's guys. it's the so. uh, Gabini or Gabrini. Yeah, Tommy Gabrini. Tommy Gabrini. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's who that's what the series is about is like their whole little crime family, and I'm yeah. all about the crime families. Um, but I was really I, surprised at the President series because you learned a lot. It's kind of like scandal and paper a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it was really good. It was good. Um, it started to kind of fall off at the end. It's, yeah. But overall, it was really good. And she is romance um, with lots of erotica. I like erotica. <laughs> There's I'm no down with that scene. An open door sexy. <laughs> yeah, I have no. I was looking specifically for BWWM erotica. Yeah. Oh, I came across her book. <laughs> And there's a ton of it. I mean, I and I'll hook you up with some links to a lot of other because I have a lot of author friends who write erotica, and it's not my genre, but it's theirs, and they write a ton of it. Like it's crazy. Ooh. But um, speaking of the whole crime family, crime boss situation, there are several authors: um, Billy London, Latrivia Nelson, um, and Sienna Meeks, and they all write BWWM crime family um, series. So Billy London has the Italian Night series, so it's about the Italian mob in England. So, oh, wow. if you, so yeah, if you can deal with the whole British speak, it's great. And I love British speak, so I'm on board with that. And it's a great series. Um, it's Italian Night series. So good. The first one in that series is called Windows. And um, the, I'll just give a little hints about it, because it's these two people. It's all BWWM, but um, the girl, the main character, the characters were like best friends, and the girl didn't really know a lot about her best friend's background or like his his behind the scenes life until he becomes basically like the don of the Italian family, and then he reveals to her that he's so in love with her, she gets shot. It's great, like it's great, it's so awesome. I'm not gonna give it away, but it's a really <laughs> good series. Um, and then Latrivia Nelson does a Russian mafia series. And it's called the Medlove Crime Family. Russian Mafia. Yeah, it's the Russian oh. Mafia. And I, I don't know if you guys know this out there in, in YouTube land, but Russians love a system. So, <laughs> they, and that's not even, like, just because of the books. Like, they really do like systems. So, and um, 
the Medlow crime family, the first one is Dimitri's Closet. Uh, and it's so good. This girl goes to work for this clothing company. She thinks it's just a boutique that she goes to work for. Then the boss, who is like this head honcho, like this tall, like seven feet tall Russian dude who's like 40 and she's like 20-something, like in her mid-20s. And she meets him and he's just enamored with her. I and feel she, very much like you. I like yeah. to take you on many dates and have a very good time with you. <laughs> Lots exactly. of vodka. <laughs> they do drink a lot of vodka. But they are down. Like the the main character's name is Royal. And the main and the man is Dimitri. And oh my gosh, Royal goes from being totally naive to a bad bitch. Oh. In a <laughs> it is crazy. If you're gonna be like the head chick of a crime family, she does it well. And their kid is no joke too. Like it's a great series. So that's Latrivia Nelson's uh, Medlow Crime Family, and then Sienna Minx has a series, and that is the Battaglia Mafia series. And the first one in that one is Destino, and they're also the Italian mafia, but it's a little bit different because um, the Don of the family died, and he he only had like a bastard son that he had, so he's like. Irish and Italian or Sicilian or whatever kind of I don't know what it is it's no disrespect to anybody Italian or Sicilian or whatever I just don't know the difference it's <laughs> but that's it's such a good series though I was not as um, you know I kind of I'm I'm in a love hate relationship with the main character in that in that series but it's really good if you like crime families those are those are some authors who do really well, and they're all BWWM, so you're not dealing with, you know, weak women, you're dealing with some ride-or-die chicks. All right. And, and they are, like, they are the they are the business. So, um, and then, to go off of that and back into erotica, for people, for people who... <laughs> People who love, um, I don't know, a lot of you probably read Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, as you know, my honey, Charlie Hunnam, is going to be Christian Grey in uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie. It should um, be Ann Summerholder. Yeah, it should have been, but they chose Charlie Hunnam, and now I have to see it. I never planned to see that movie, and now I have to because my honey's in it. And um, But if you liked Fifty Shades of Grey, but you thought something's missing, you know, I, I feel like I can't connect with it as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Then you will like um, L. V. Lewis's Fifty Shades of Jungle Fever. <laughs> it's awesome. And and I know you're thinking, a lot of people don't like the term Jungle Fever. I personally don't like the term Jungle Fever. So I passed over this book like a million times because I was like, I'm not reading about no Jungle Fever. So and then. It was like it was free one night on Amazon, and I was like, "Okay, I'll get it." So, as it was free, I read it, and it's not what you think at all. It is so good, and if you thought that something was missing from Fifty Shades of Grey, then Fifty Shades of Jungle Fever is what was missing. It is awesome, and instead of having uh, Anastasia Steele and Christian uh, Grey, you have Tristan White and Keisha from the Block. And oh wow! It is great. And it is great. It is great. Keisha is great. Her best friend Jada is great. Tristan has a twin brother named Nathan. It's great. Um, and this is a trilogy or a quadrilogy or whatever she said. <laughs> um, that's what she calls it. So, but it's so good. And the next one is called Exit Strategies, and that's coming out sometime this fall. I don't know. Um, look her up. She says it's going to be sometime this fall, but I haven't heard exactly um, what or when exactly it's coming out. That's just a tentative release date. Um, okay, does anybody else want to talk? I've done a lot of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shira is on. She does erotic uh, romance and OMG style. So good. Oh, right. There, there is this book called Hostile Takeover, and I don't believe it's Strahzad. It's actually, actually, I can look it up right now on my handy-dandy Kindle, uh, because it's that good. But um, Hostile Takeover, if you like a dominant <laughs> man... <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? Are you laughing at me? Yeah. 
Am I weird for the hostile takeover? It's really good. <laughs> the handy dandy Kendall is what I'm well, looking at. Well, yes. why? I know. I was laughing at that too. Why? Um, while you look that up, Crazy in Love says, shaking my head at Fifty Shades of Jungle Fever, and then she has a confused eyes, the big eye, the little eye. <laughs> she goes dot 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 a mess. You won't if you don't like the term Jungle Fever. Trust me, you will not be upset by this book. I thought I would be upset. I was like, oh no, they're going to be referring to everything as Jungle Fever. It's not like that at all. It's part of the BDSM lifestyle, just like Fifty Shades of Grey. So you will want to read it. Trust me, I would not lead you astray. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Hostile Takeover is by Yvonne and Shirazad. They team up. Now, these two women write some pretty amazing Randy scenes. Oh, and there's a question for you, Piper. Yes. Did they ever write a part two? Of what? Fifty Shades of Jungle Fever? That's what I'm thinking because P. Beeler 25. Hi, she asks. I've read that book. Did they ever write a part two, Piper? Part two of Fifty Shades of Jungle Fever is called Exit Strategies, and it should be out this fall. So sometime this fall it should be coming out. Um, but it could be pushed back. The author's been pushing back. Uh, the time frame a lot. So it's L.V. Lewis. She does have a website. Um, but yeah, Shirazad, Yvonne, Hostile Takeover, great book if you like dominant men. And the world knows I do. Yes. So it's a good <laughs> so it's, it's such a good book. And it'll leave you like hiding your, your Kindle or if you buy the book, wherever form you buy it in, you'll be hiding it and you won't want people to stumble upon it at all. <laughs> you have to explain to you, but it's so good. Um, and I'm going to stop there before I gush <laughs> any more over it. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and then Nikki Prince, who is like mm -hmm. a really good friend of mine, writes a lot of erotica, but she does a lot of her recent fairy tales, and these are just like a, an erotic spin on classic fairy tales, which is awesome. And they're out, they just came out in printed form, but there are a ton of different ones. Um, so you got to check those out. She's got a ton. I'm drawing a blank because I'm slow right now because Sons of Anarchy is on. It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you got to check Nikki out. She just had... Um, she just had another book come out, and it's, oh, why can't I figure it out? It's something about his swan dancer. I think it is just his swan dancer. So good. Um, but that one's a WMB, no, a VMWW. But, so don't read that one if you like BWWM. <laughs> but the other ones are BWWM. And there's uh. even like a, there's even like a three-way BWWM one kind of weird, but it's good. It's good. Check it out. And that's a spin on Little Red Riding Hood. So, an erotic spin. Really good. And there's a Cinderella erotic spin, too. Um, so, those are good. Anybody else want to add anything to the mix? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm just like, just totally just gushing over all these people that I think are amazing. This is your thing. It's very, very informative. Yes. Okay. And Arosa Knowles, she's awesome. She writes a series called the Three X Construction Series, and it's about these ex cons, and they get out of prison, and they are like they have their own business, and what they do is it's a construction company, and they hire guys who are kind of just like them, kind of giving them a second chance in life, mm -hmm. and um. They, but they, it's BWWM. Oh, it's such a good series, and she's an amazing writer. I mean, she's such a good writer that if she wrote on her toilet paper, I'd read it. Oh. <laughs> I'd, read, I'd read it. I wouldn't buy her toilet paper if she wrote a story on there. It's that good. She's a really good author. Her and Aaliyah Burke are like neck and neck for like my favorites because Aaliyah Burke, uh, she does a Navy SEAL series, and it's the Megalodon team, and OMG, so good. <laughs> so, so good. Um, and then I just read a, recently, I just read a book called um, Forgive Me, Father, For I Have Loved, and it's okay. by Tiana Levine, 
and it's about a priest who falls in love. And um, this is all BWWM, so everything I'm describing, BWWM. But it's about a priest who falls in love with this chick, and she's, you know, he's having a real hard time coping, coming to terms with the fact that he's in love. But man, once he commits, he gives his all. Uh, so he leaves. <laughs> he leaves the priesthood. Yeah, he does. He Let does. me tell you that Coochie is a powerful thing. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He wasn't getting it though. He he still stayed true to his you know his moral. Code. He was leaving with the thought that he was going to get him some stuff. Okay. Okay. Maybe it was in the pro he he figured that that was part of the package and he liked that package. He yeah. liked the benefits package of that. But it's so good and she does a really amazing job handling the whole um, Catholic faith and leaving the priesthood. I mean, because there's a lot of like taboo stuff that you would think goes along with it, and she did a really amazing job handling that and kind of discussing and going over the whole you know Catholic faith and the idea behind it and the priests in general. And she's a really great job. And it's a really good book, so if you can find it, it's Forgive Me, Father, for I Have Loved. Good book. Um, trying to think of anything else, since you guys are being shockingly quiet. <laughs> Danny is always it's quiet. Really, it, no, you know what? This is just really difficult for me, because I, I just, I, I don't read. <laughs> I don't read those books. <laughs> Danny can't read, so. I can't read, them. no. You know what? It's very hard. I, I read a lot of biographies. That's what I, I mostly read. I read, read motivational and biography. So these can be motivational. <laughs> <laughs> I found some of them I'm, very I'm not a big. I'm just not a big fiction reader. That's all. Oh well, thanks a lot, Danny, because <laughs> I write fiction. <laughs> so what does that mean for me? Because I write fiction. I didn't say I don't like it. I just said I'm not a big fiction reader. No, I'm totally on board with this is, you know, this is your baby. This is what you do. This is why I said, you know what, you rock it. Because I'm learning a lot, so I have a whole list that I have to go through as well. Yeah, I that. mean, and this, and again, this is just a very short list. The list goes on. And the great thing about these authors is that a lot of them, well, I all of the ones that I'm mentioning are in, um, they are swirlers. They are black women who swirl. So they are with white men, and, you know, they have a little bit, better of an idea, I guess, of how that, you know, the dynamics of those relationships. It's really nice that they're written by black women. Um, I know Dee and I have discussion about how sometimes they, they don't really portray the, the man properly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, and, but a lot of them do, but there are those, you know, that do not, and the man comes off a little bit different, <laughs> like, not like he should. Yeah, um, different than what we experience in our day to day. Yeah, not they're not the no the men. Some of the men are not like the men we meet <laughs> on that so not at all. But you know, again, you know, it's a woman writing a man's perspective. So sometimes, you know, obviously, no one can tell a man's perspective like a man. Mm -hmm. So there's J.J. Murray, if anybody is familiar with him, and he is a white man married to a black woman, and he writes uh, contemporary romance, and but it's all B.W.W.M. That's see, so, I, didn't even know, I think it's awesome. Yeah, so and he's like one out of I mean, I don't think there's any other men, honestly. He's the only one. And he actually wrote a story about him and his wife. Like it was it's based on him and his wife meeting. Um, so it's really cool. I'm trying to look for the name of it because I have obviously I have it. I have everything. Um, <laughs> I have all the books, every book I own. But um yeah, it's really, really good and he he writes um, a very good male perspective because obviously he's male, but he does a really good job with the female perspective too. And that's something that's shocking. You wouldn't necessarily think that a man could do that that well, but he does. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have Tressy Lockwood who writes really good books. She has a book um, called Something Unexpected. So good. That was the first book I ever read of hers, and it's about um, two coworkers, or the, a woman gets together on accident with her boss's son. Lo and behold, she gets pregnant. But it, ugh, such good book. And um, Lena Matthews writes uh, very good. She actually has a book called The Blacker the Berry, 
which is really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I know it sounds bad, but it's good. <laughs> Some of these titles. They give it a bad rap, but it's such a good book. And there's also a book she writes called He's So Shy, and that's great. And let me just tell you, he is not shy. <laughs> <laughs> he is not shy. He's not shy at all. Spoiler alert. <laughs> He's definitely not shy. <laughs> but, and then there's um, Shyla Colt, and she um, she's another interracial. She's also BWWM. These are all... BWWM, amazing writers, amazing authors, amazing women. So please go check out their books. Um, and Dee, do you want to talk about the last uh, author? Um, it's this little author. You know her really. You, this little you, author. <laughs> oh gosh, what's her name? Oh my gosh, I cannot remember it. Oh, her name is Piper. <laughs> and Piper, <laughs> yay! The book was released just last week, or the week uh, before last. It's about week two weeks before, ago. It was, yeah, on the sixth. Yeah, so about two weeks ago, your book was released. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, I knew you were going to pop it out. Yay! Dead inside. Dead inside. It's available. Soft and, copy, hard copy. Um, it's available paperback, um, and it's available everywhere. Everywhere books are sold. Um, Weren't you just like, featured in an article today? Yes, I was just interviewed today um, on Authors to Watch. So it, that's a blog too. So it's um, www.authorstowatch.com. So and I was interviewed there today. But uh, yes, I'm 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 famous. <laughs> I'm amazing. Is what it is. Really, not kidding. <laughs> but and I'm modest. <laughs> and that's <laughs> so modest. Mm. And uh, yeah, the book, my book, Dead Inside, is also BWWM. Everything I write is interracial, though. I don't, I don't like to put together people of the same race. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm staunchly against it, but it's not unnaturally so. So it's not like I'm just pairing like people at random who have nothing in common or anything. It's actually, it's done tastefully and systematically and uh, but Dead Inside is a dark urban fantasy and a lot of people think urban fantasy and they go oh it's black fantasy no urban fantasy is, doesn't have anything to do with race urban fantasy just means that it's a, a novel with fantastical elements that are in normal everyday life so you'll it's like the suburbs you know like you know like Vampires that roar around Arizona, that kind of thing. Like it's more like that. So where you, where you're different is that you get a lot of the different elements. Like you know, for a long while I was like really into the vampire books, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, and then there's the BWWM books, fantasy, because I like mm -hmm. more instruments. I really like them. And then okay, so you're vampire, so you hit like the Twilight or you know, the Vampire Diaries and Mortal Instruments meets, you know, a Mallory Monroe book. And so that's where mm -hmm. you get all the different elements of yours rolled into one. So it's great because you've got the three different styles yeah. rolled into one to one book. And I don't write just about vampires. I'm in Dead Inside. There are witches. There are sirens. Right. So that's um, how it is in, Mor in, yeah. city, in um, Mortal Instruments. It's yeah. Like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a lot. Of, I touch on a lot of different supernatural beings because that, it's basically about the world, you know, supernatural world being thrown into chaos. You know, it's about to be extinct. So um, there's, it's a lot of different supernatural. But yeah, so Dead Inside is out now. Amazon. Um, I'm giving away a copy. I did a giveaway already, and some people definitely entered. And I have four copies I'm giving away to them. Uh, but I will give away a copy to anybody. From this broadcast, um, and I don't know what the rules are going to be. Here's the rule: I have an author page, uh, fan page on Facebook, and I have a website, www.piper-anderson.com. So, I have these files. They're called the dead files. So, I need facts about the characters from the dead files or from my website. And there's a ton of facts on there about the characters because I do some build up before the release. So I have a lot of different facts. So if somebody can bring me a fact about each of the main characters 
I will give them a free copy of the book. How about that? So contact me on It's a Swirl World or my personal channel. But you have to give me facts about the char the main characters. By when? By next Tuesday, we'll call it that. So even though we won't have a show next Tuesday, but next Tuesday. You guys got that? So we'll do that. Um, and that's pretty much it, I guess. Yeah. I think we're done for the night, people. How did it go? How do we think we did? I think we did good. This reminds me very much of our type of swirl. So it's a plethora of information and yeah. knowledge, and people get to pick and choose what they want to see or what they want to read. So that's awesome. So yeah. you guys can always come back here and comment once you do read or watch your movies and let us know. And we'll engage because we're always on. So we'll engage with you on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all those good things. So and if you read my book, if you read my book, mm -hmm. review it on Amazon and Goodreads and all that other places. Do that. That helps me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So um, we won't be back next week, guys. But up. Uh, <laughs> she'll be back. <laughs> she'll be back. But we um, will be back in two weeks with um, kind of like a. What is it, Danny? Like a news? Kind of in show? the news. Kind of in, in the, the news. news. So all things relevant to, well, what's going on in the news, um, fact, and we'll touch on a little bit of entertainment, too. Um, just stories, to keep stories you may have seen, like, uh, on our Facebook page, on Twitter. And things um, of that. But, and if there's yeah, anything that you want to talk about, hit us up on any of our social media outlets. Anything that you want to talk about that's relevant to our community and that you'd like to discuss on the show. On Twitter, on, show. on Facebook, on Tumblr, mm -hmm. on our website, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, <Five>. we're, we're, <laughs> we're very accessible. We're so accessible, it's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, Piper, we were just telling them about our, our, our next show and the news. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, we're excited about that. Um, we may even have a guest or two. Um, so, again, it's news, current events. Um, if you aren't really sure what we're talking about, you can always go to our Facebook page. We've uploaded some links, some pictures, you know, controversial things that are going on. Um, so we're going to be touching base on on those as well as some other uh, things that are floating around in the news. And um, we'll see you then, guys. So thanks for tuning in tonight. We appreciate you. We sure do. Bye, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. And this is the part where we just sit and smile.